Hi everybody, my name is Neil Malik from NAC Training and in the today's Everyday Office video we're going to demonstrate how to conditionally format a chart. Now notice I said a chart, not a cell or a set of cells. You can see here that I've used standard conditional formatting to highlight the cells that say small gadget, 27,000 units, etc. into this pale orange color. That's a standard conditional formatting on a cell. What I want to discuss today is how I turned this column, this bar, of this chart orange because the small gadget was the highest value in the chart. Notice here that if I switch from Harris over to Brown, for example, when Brown sells the most units of medium gadgets, you can see that the orange bar in this chart follows that highest value. And when I switch over here to Taylor, you can see that the orange bar is now the green widget bar. So a conditionally formatted chart is one in which a column or a segment of your chart highlights because it is the important element. Important can mean anything. Here you can see this is the maximum value. But you could just as easily, you see over here on the side, I have a little chart that shows me that if I'm interested in the second quarter, right there, it's going to highlight the values of the second quarter. And when I hit the drop down menu here and switch to the third quarter, you can see that the highlighting, the conditional formatting on this chart follows along and goes ahead and highlights the third quarter values instead of the second quarter values. And when I switch to the fourth quarter, you can see again that it slides down the chart and it helps to highlight those values within that chart. So a conditionally formatted chart is one that highlights the relevant data, whatever that relevancy happens to be. If you want this spreadsheet with these conditionally formatted charts in action, you can go ahead and download them using the link in the description below. Notice here on the data tab that I have a few different elements of information that are important. Here we have our overall sales table. Here we have our table full of products. Here we have our table full of salespeople and the regions that they serve. And here we have a table with our customers, the sales that those customers are driving and who the salespeople are who manage those customers. So what I would like to do is create a chart that as I change from Taylor to Potter to cruise, it allows me to highlight which products are most important to me, which customers are most important to me, etc. So let's say that I want to track uh, the products that each one of our salespeople is doing the best at. What I can do is create a little list of all the products. I'll go over here to my data tab and uh, highlight the six products that we're selling copy those and bring them over into the chart tab, paste them in. Now at this point, what I need to know is how much of each one of these products Potter happens to be selling. I can use the SUMIFS function. If you're not sure how to use the SUMIFS function, please make sure to follow the link on the side over here in order to watch the video that I put up about SUMIFS. But what we want to do is we want to do a SUMIFS function for green widget for Potter, then orange widget for Potter, etc. That's equal sign SUMIFS. The sum range. Now I could go over and highlight those cells uh, of the cells that need to be added up, but I actually went ahead and named this previously. The name of my table is TBL sales square brackets, total sale. So add up the total sale column from the table sales table, comma. If the product is a green widget, so that's TBL sales, square brackets product is comma equal to a green widget, comma. And if TBL sales square brackets salesperson is equal to Potter right over here. Now notice that I did not lock down the reference to cell D3, the green widget. 
uh, because I will be auto filling this down for orange widget and purple widget, but uh, I do always want it to be locked on to Potter's cell, cell B3. So I'm going to use the F4 keyboard shortcut to lock that down and close the parentheses and lock in those calculations. So right here, we can see the total sales of different products for Potter. And when I use the drop down menu, I can see Cruz, I can see Brown, I can see Reynolds, I can see Harris, or Bailey, or Taylor. There we go. Now, if you noticed, as I was going through these, most of the time, the people's largest uh, sale was for large gadgets. But you can see here, Harris is selling more medium gadgets. So that's interesting to me. I'll go ahead and highlight these cells and insert a simple chart to reflect this information. Go to my Insert tab at the top of the screen, go into my Column and Bar Chart drop-down menu, and pick a nice 2D bar chart. Now, for reasons that are beyond my understanding, every time you make a 2D bar chart, the default order of the entries in that bar chart is flipped from what it is in the original table. So I'll click directly onto these entries and use the keyboard shortcut Control-1 to format them so that over here on the right-hand panel, I can choose the checkbox that says Categories in Reverse Order. Okay, so now we have green widget and orange widget and purple widget and the large gadget and the medium gadget and the small gadget in the exact same order as they are in the original table. And I'm going to take a moment here and just get rid of some of this extraneous stuff. I don't need the chart title. I don't need the number values. I don't need the labels anymore because those are already there. And in fact, I'm going to use Control-1 on my keyboard in order to format the background of this chart. I'm going to tell it not to fill the background of the chart and not to have a line around the outside of the chart. And so now I have a chart that is very vanilla, very simple, that I can sort of mock up really close to the data that it's coming from. Okay, so we're doing pretty good here. But the problem is that I do not yet have any way of highlighting the medium gadget amongst all the other options that are here. The way we do this is that we take the chart, push it over to the side, and we make an entirely additional set of values here next to this original set. And all we want to do is in this set, if we don't care about a value, that value should be set to zero. And if we do care about the value, that value should be set to whatever its actual value is. And when I say that, what I mean is, you know, if what I care about is the highest value, that's fine. If what I care about is the lowest value, that's fine as well. If what I care about is everything that falls within two values, that's fine as well. It's up to you to decide what's important. But once you do, the thing that's important should be listed over here in the next cell, and things that aren't important should be listed as zeros. The function that we're going to use here to make this happen is the if function together with the max function. So I go to my uh, formulas tab at the top of the screen, use my uh, logical drop down menu and choose if. And I need to test out whether any one of these sales is important to me. So the logical test box is something that comes out as true or false. What I'm interested in is, is $318,250 cell E3 equal to the max value between E3 and E8? And again, I'll use my F4 key on my keyboard to lock that down and close the parentheses. So you notice here, the question I'm asking is, is $318,000 the biggest value in this chart? And it says, no, it's not. So if it were, again, I'm going to go to value of true and choose cell E3. If it's true, if it's the biggest value, output that value. But if it's not, output a zero then click OK and auto fill this down. And what you notice is the only value that's there 
is the biggest value. And if I switch from Harris to Potter, you can see, again, the maximum value goes along for the ride. And if I switch this over to Taylor, you can see the maximum value goes along for the ride. That's what I'm looking for right there. A duplication of the thing that's important to me and zeros for everything else. Now once I do that, the technique that I'm going to use is to highlight the cells in question, copy them, and click on the chart and simply use Control V to paste. So a standard paste action, Control V. What you'll notice is that now we have a gray bar highlighting which one is the biggest value, that $979,000 that are there. When I shift it from Taylor to Potter, you can see the gray bar goes to the $1.2 million. And when I switch from Potter to Harris, you can see it goes to the $1.1 million. So we're very close at this point because I want this gray bar to be indicative of the thing that's going to get highlighted. So to clean this up, I click on the blue bars that are here. And I decide to make them fairly subtle, fairly simple. So I'm going to go to my paint bucket tool over here on the right hand side. If you don't have this, remember to use the control one keyboard shortcut to format the cells, or in this case, the bars, and then change the color of this to, let's say a medium gray color like that. And then click on the dark gray bar that's here and change that fill color to something very bright like orange. Now we're getting even closer. You can see here that as I switch from Harris to Cruise, or from Cruise to Taylor, that again that orange bar goes along with whichever one is the biggest. So the last technique we need to use is to click on the bars that we have in there and choose, again, Control-1 on the keyboard in order to format over here on the right. Choose to overlap the two series on top of one another to 100%. So I pull that slider bar across, and you can see now that the orange bar sits on top of the gray bar. You can also reduce the gap width. I like a gap width around 75%. And now you can see how that conditionally formatted chart updates every time you shift from one salesperson to another salesperson. Now the home stretch of this is to set up the chart so that it will work every time and to sort of clean up the environment. Notice right here, I don't really want to see this additional column. That's just the plumbing that makes this work. So I click onto the chart and after clicking on the chart, I go to my Design tab at the top of the screen, click on Select Data, and there's this button in the bottom left-hand corner calling itself Hidden and Empty Cells. If I click on Hidden and Empty Cells, I can click the checkbox here that says, if I decide to hide this column right here, let's go ahead and still show the data because that's essential to the chart working the way I want it to. So I click the checkbox to say, yes, show the data in hidden rows and columns. Click OK and click OK. And now I can right click on the F column and hide it. And the chart will still work appropriately. And so now as I shift from Harris to Potter or from Potter to Taylor, you can see that the orange bar that goes along with that green widget sort of moves along and finds the highest value in the table. And that's how you conditionally format charts. You're always looking to find some sort of structure that allows you to pinpoint the one or two things that are important and highlight those in a different color than normal. Go ahead and like and subscribe because in the very near future, I'm going to show you a couple of other conditional formatting techniques that can be really beautiful and helpful when it comes time to storytell with your data.